no one is perfect being successful at your job doesn't mean you don't make mistakes at all but the best professionals make these mistakes take them analyze them learn from them and make sure they make them better people on the other hand if your bad habits at the workplace your bad behavior have grown so much that it now affects your bottom line and the way you bring results at work it is time to reevaluate these mistakes on this video i'm going to be sharing with you 10 things we are not taking into 2023 we are already in 2023 years but yeah this is still a very good time for you to stop these mistakes at the workplace just so that you get the best from your nine to five as i like to say from your nine to thrive if this is something you think you would enjoy sit back relax and let's have a good time watching this video my name is stephanie and you're welcome to the metro gypsy platform number one arriving late and leaving early i don't understand even if it's your father's company that is such a horrible mark to leave like that is such a bad thing for people to know you for the person who comes late like did they see you early like, what happened no it shouldn't be like that especially when you're not working for yourself but we're talking nine to five where you're getting paid you're coming early and the one thing your body is scratching you want to get up and leave that is not even a good look at all so if this is something you do don't take pride in it. Like, don't think you're manipulating them or you're you know, getting more hours and less work. Nah, don't do that. That is such a horrible look and that's not how we want to be looking in the new year and beyond. You starting your day early or coming early, whatever the time is, it just sets you up properly. Like you never have, you never know the random meeting that can come up. You never know someone that might just need you and you're there to solve the issue. So if this is something you do, arriving late, stop that going forward. My number two is unnecessary microaggressions so microaggressions come in form of little comments you know those offhand comments and those things stem from your belief in life maybe some of you are i don't know sexist or racist or you just have a problem with some kind of certain people just take that away just drop that at home if it's something you have in your life drop that at home because sometimes your emotional intelligence doesn't click quickly that brain I think the animal, our animal brain is what they call it, the one that reacts immediately something happens. Those kind of things can show your microaggression. Or it could even be in maybe a team's call with someone personally. You guys are just talking about something and then because you're relaxed and everything, you just start, you know, making some kind of silly comments or just giving off that air of, I don't like this race or I don't like this sex or I don't like this. Just those kind of stupid personal nonsense habits. Keep them in your kitchen table. Do not bring them to work. Microaggressions could also come in form of generalizations. You know how people say this particular um, tribe, they do this, this particular set of people do this. Just keep those off. Like when you're at the workplace, just be thinking of your work, how to solve problems, how to get your work done at the right time and arriving early and not making stupid comments that have nothing to do with the work at hand just keep professionalism at the top of your brain and drop all flipping beliefs and forms of microaggressions that can come from yourself number three mistake you shouldn't be making is interrupting so someone is talking it could be your somebody it could be your colleague your mate it could be your boss and they're making a point and you just interrupt even if they're saying something that you did not do or whatever just let them talk because Cutting people off when you're talking, interrupting people, it doesn't give you any form of confidence. Like people don't even trust you. you. You might feel that, oh, you want to be heard and you want to defend yourself. Nah, just calm down. When someone finishes talking, you talk and don't even raise your voice. So interrupting someone, obviously, you have to, apart from the fact that you're interjecting into their, their statements, you can also raise your voice just so that you know you are part of them. It's not a good look at all. So interrupting people doesn't look good for you. Try to take things calmly. Even if you think something is being said about you that doesn't make sense, just when they finish talking, you confidently raise your own point. You being more power. There's more, I don't know, effects. When you're calm and saying things, you know, things are supposed to provoke you, don't provoke you. You're just calm and you're, you know, saying your own points when it comes to your time. The first mistake you should make is not giving credit where it is due. This mistake is usually made by bosses most of the time or like little team leads. You guys, you know, maybe you meet somewhere and then you've brought up 
idea someone else has brought up an idea and then you're now having like a general meeting and you're telling your bosses the idea like it was you that brought it that doesn't even help the people that are working under you because it doesn't give them confidence to support you when you're not there there's a way you give people credit like you talk thank you in front of other um, higher people you say this was the person who brought this was their idea and we're running with it you know they just feel better like when you're not there they want to even root for you without you being there but when you're taking people's credit like it's just insulting you know no matter how low someone is they want to feel you know, their inputs is being noticed by you by their colleagues and by you guys bosses as well and then if you're the boss okay you're the one at the top 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 you want people to work for you like someone does something right is working tell them thank you once in a while you bring it up that i am um, that idea you brought is working thanks to that idea you brought it motivates other people to also bring because they know they won't bring it and then you carry it as if, as if you're the one that you know where the idea so try and give credit where credit is due lift people up encourage them when they try when other people around you thrive you are thriving as well when your bosses thrive you are thriving when your subordinates thrive you are thriving Number five, and this is a mistake me I have made actually, is always being on your phone. Always being on your phone is never a good look. Like it has never been a good Like I don't even know which place in the world being on your phone every time is when you're waiting for an appointment. Okay, maybe then, but you're on a date, you're at work, you're at lunch. Like communicate, like give, just give attention. Like let people know that you came here to actually prioritize them or you can't, you're prioritizing your work. You can't be, especially if you've been working in finance, like data protection you're looking at people's accounts you're looking at finances that you did on your phone typing replying to someone on whatsapp or someone on instagram i know some of you your families like i've had a conversation with one of my colleagues like why are you always on your phone like no we have so many groups on the on the charts and then someone's wedding is coming and we have to communicate mm -mm, you're at work you know don't give that vibe if your phone is doing you go into the toilet reply reply come back just be looking serious you get if you're trying there's some places where they let you listen to music there are a lot of places that will work you can listen to music while you work put your phone upside down you're trying to watch videos sometimes i'm trying to watch big brother at work guys imagine um, so I now put the phone up and my colleague was like, ah, ah, why is your video? Ah, and I said, go, my God, Stephanie. So after that day, like never again. So even if I'm trying to watch something that's video, at least I know the voices of the people I'm watching. I just put my phone inside my bag, have my headphones because that's allowed. And then you're listening, just giving off that air of I can be doing my phone while I'm doing my work. It doesn't even look good at all. Like, you know, if you're making your work and your bosses look like, you know, you're doing something for them, like they're important to you, you know, so that always be on your phone. It's a nonsense thing that has happening in our lives since mobile phones came because i'm sure there were times some years ago that there were no mobile phones and this kind of nonsense wasn't happening i get then i guess it's just unnecessary talking and chatting obviously your mobile phone is there for emergencies but even at the church like wherever you are really your social gatherings talk to people don't be always on your phone maybe okay the only time you should always be on phone when you're in your bed <laughs> or something after praying and everything and you're just like okay catch up especially if social media is your work as well yeah number six mistake you should not make is being dismissive so working in an environment that is nine to five most of the time you have a team you should always be tolerant to people tolerance to people's ideas people's opinions everybody came from the same different places so everybody has a kind of an angle they're saying things from when someone is saying something that you don't even believe in you don't even understand where they're coming from with or is even really really stupid do not be dismissive listen to it say you understand what they're saying that's not you being shady say you understand but you know you've taken note of it especially if you're like colleague or um leader you're taking notes of it and then you know if you want to apply you apply if you don't want to apply don't apply but just cutting someone off doesn't even help any situation because the next time they have an idea they won't bring it to you again they won't bring it up in public again because of the way you dismiss them communication is such an important thing that people should learn how to say no in such a way that the person that are saying no to feel like that no is actually for their own benefit number seven mistake not to make is displaying an increased sense of urgency as you acting like everything needs to be done now now and it's a lie nothing needs to nobody would die that's one thing i always say when i'm working like i'm just trying to pressure my co my friend or trying to pressure me i'm like if this thing doesn't like if it's not something within my power like nobody would die you guys like don't get pushed don't be the person who's <clears throat> this thing has to be done today when it's so massive like it's even bigger than everybody like the day we now need something to be done 
everybody will think you're calling wolf because you've been pressurizing and pressurizing for no reason so if there's no important or immediate sense of urgency towards a certain um, work or target or set of work to be done do not push that because you're not even going to be trustworthy i've been on projects where they will tell you oh, we have three months to complete this from um, january to march everything should be done as at march you're still seeing plenty of necessary work you're still seeing everything just looking like it's a lie and then at, at when the match now comes they're not even saying oh my god these people increase it's just as if they're lying to you just so that you do you know it doesn't give you that sense of belonging you just feel calm and being light to so why would I even take anything seriously? So if something is not urgent, don't make it urgent. Just encourage people. Let them feel happy that they're working around. When people feel happy, they feel part of a team, they feel heard, they feel they give, they, they're getting credit they deserve. Trust me, you don't even need to push in anything. As long as the person is a lazy person, you don't need to be pushing unnecessary deadlines to people. They will do the work and do it happily. Be respectful of people's time. Be respectful of people's common sense. Be respectful of people's brains because you're working with humans and you're just in that position because you was, you was probably you have experience or you seem to be a good leader or whatever. And then even if you're not a leader, you just start learning that you shouldn't be putting a sense of urgency to things. Okay, let's say there's a different department that does something that, you know, brings and like part of the your role, you know, needs another department to do something to make your work finish. You know, as that, you, and you know, you've not even finished, or you can, you have two days to submit that thing. Plus, I said, this thing needs to go by the end of the day. This needs to go in thirty minutes. Mm -mm. The day you need something to go in thirty minutes, it wouldn't, because nobody's a machine and nobody's foolish. Especially when you work in a country where people have sense and people know their rights. Number eight mistake I would say is not coming through integrity, lacking integrity, like not following through with your words. It's so easy to make promises when someone's asking for something. Oh my God! By tomorrow morning I'll be done. By this, this, this I'll be done. Tomorrow morning we're still looking for you. You've not even said hi. Uh, this is the reason why you're just. Do not say things you can't do. If you can't, if you say something and you can't eventually, you're not able to do it, holler immediately. This is the reason why this is happening. I'm on it now, you know. Don't be that person who, when they say something, your words don't even have weight. Like people just listen, okay, and just start moving. Don't be that person. Everyone drops the ball now and then, like based on, you know, what you say you do or your capabilities at the time. But the point is, you said you do it. If you can't do it immediately, let them be able to count on you let people around you be able to count on your word and your and your actions obviously they should always match what you say you're going to do if you can't do it as i said immediately explain the reason why and get on it and provide you know your solution your actions as soon as you can number nine this is something i noticed when i then working with certain my, my people complaining I remember when I was my first, one of my first rules in this country, I used to say, gosh, Nigerians complain a lot, like, Kili Lee, one little change in the process, they're complaining. You're complaining that, it's not like you're complaining because it's a bad process, it's just that you're complaining for change. So I don't want to be that one generalizing now and say, okay, Nigerians complain or complaining is not a good look. You get, even if you're not okay with something, just check it, check this up. There might be an advantage. There's a reason that, that thing is changing. There's a reason that process has joined. There's a reason things are happening that we just look at the be better side of things. That will stop you from complaining. I'm sure some people are already so used to complaining because everything around them in naturally in life just always happens so annoyingly or whatever. But the way to curb your complaining you just look at it calm down look at this thing okay now we're doing this what are the advantages of this one what are the disadvantages obviously there's nothing that's perfect perfect the things always have their you know pros and cons so analyze it in that way and be like okay well there's nothing i can even do to change this thing the fact that you know there are advantages to it there's nothing you can do to change it you just stick with it and start working with it also another way to you know, stop the complaining is just Take yourself away from people that complain a lot because when you're around people that complain a lot, you don't know what you used to, you just be complaining everything in your conversation, you complain, complain. You just have to be finding ways, strategies to, you know, make ends meet, make results come quickly. You're complaining. Like, yeah, change is difficult sometimes, but then again, change is what makes processes faster. Like, there's a reason that change has come. If it really, 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 really doesn't make sense, yeah, then you raise your complaint in a professional way to who matters, not who doesn't matter. Because when you're raising complaints to who doesn't matter, it's just gossip or side stupid unnecessary unprofessional talk so complaining mm, reduce it and number 10 mistake not to make this particular mistake i this particular point is something that made me want to do one reel regarding 
this do's and don'ts like just to buttress this particular point and that is apologizing for your ideas usually statements like this might sound stupid but how about i know this is a bad idea but what if i'm not really sure but why don't we you know very very lack of confidence statement like this nah that's you apologizing for you about to say and that doesn't you already loses the weight of your idea or your comments so when you're about to say something you say we, if we do this this way, da 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 da. Not this might be a foolish, show, but I think this might be a stupid question. But mm -mm, don't come off that way. Don't come off that way. Say your point immediately, just the way you mean it. If it's a question you're asking, ask it. There's no stupid question because it's coming from you. It's not stupid. It's a question because you you don't understand that point at that time. Not giving yourself excuses for. Mm, be confident. Come off well. Don't apologize for your questions. With those kind of comments before you make statements or before you ask questions, you're not only selling yourself short, you're also making your colleagues and team members look at you very unseriously. Please stop apologizing for what you have to say. Say it with your full chest. <laughs> Guys, that's all for this video. These are the 10 things I think we should leave. Whenever, whatever year you're watching, you just leave it and move on without these mistakes at the workplace. And you're going to definitely thrive. Please follow me on Instagram, Metro Gypsy. That's where I create content on the go. Click the thumb up button on this video because it really helps the video. Drop a comment because I love to read from you. Share this video as well with your friends, your family, and your enemies. I'll see you on the next episode. Don't forget to work hard, but work smarter.